Hi, just a quick video today to show you some of the updates I've made to the software running on my ESP32 RGB matrix. Uh, this isn't a full tutorial, so if you haven't seen my original video on this project and you'd like to make one of these yourself, uh, please go and have a look at that video, which I've linked in the card above, hopefully, and in the description below. Uh, a little while ago, I was invited to a space-themed party where fancy dress wasn't optional. Uh, I don't normally do fancy dress, uh, but I decided to go uh, all out on this one. So I took my LED matrix and added some aluminium arms to it so I could wear it and wired it up so it could run from a USB power pack. Uh, this 20,000 milliamp hour pack easily ran the whole thing for over eight hours, uh, with seemingly with power to spare. Uh, I also added some sound reactive strips up the arms that flash in time to the music. So there's a little microphone on the side here. You can see it flashes. There's also other built-in patterns here as well. Uh, not all of them actually need sound uh, to work. Let's put on one of the non-reactive patterns. There we go. And these uh, LED strips are actually based on one of my previous projects, which again, hopefully if I've done this correctly, uh, should be linked in uh, on a card above at the moment. This is actually made with a little uh, electric microphone for picking up the sound, and it has an adjustable gain uh, microphone preamp built into the board uh, just to make detecting the music patterns a little bit easier. Um, I think you can get these from SparkFun or I'll do what I did and just go to eBay for a cheaper knockoff version, which works just as well. This update completely refactors the code to add a menu system, meaning that multiple different apps and games can be run from one device. So if I go into the menu here, you can see that we have Tetris, which was built in on the previous video. We have Snake, we have Breakout, and we also have the pixel art stuff that I was showing you a little bit earlier. The pixel art was just acting as a stand-in when nobody was playing games on this. That was what was displaying in the background. So in order to get this code to work, we need to make a couple of edits to Aaron Liddleman's sprite library. Um, so if we open this up, LED Sprites Master, and then we're looking for LED Sprites.cpp. Now, as I explained in my previous video uh, where I introduced Tetris on the LED matrix, the first thing we need to do is replace all of the instances of min and max with underscore min and underscore max, um, as you can see here. The next thing we need to do, though, is to scroll to the set frame function, which I think is around line 310. Yep, just here. And the original line here says M frame equals underscore max, blah, 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 blah. I think what he was trying to do here is to catch errors. So if you accidentally told a sprite to go to an animation frame uh, beyond the number of frames that it has, uh, it would default to the last existing frame. However, the way this is actually written, it always goes to the last frame on the sprite. Uh, so for now, we can work around this by ignoring this check and simply replacing this line uh, with this line here. One final thing to be aware of, um, since writing the Tetris code, uh, in the last video, I've actually rewired my matrix in a zigzag pattern uh, rather than a horizontal pattern. So I've had to change this line, uh, define matrix type to horizontal underscore zigzag underscore matrix. Um, if your matrix isn't set up as a zigzag, then you can replace this with horizontal matrix, like so, and it should work just as well as before. So with all of those changes made, hopefully we can uh, compile this and fingers crossed it all works. Brilliant, so that compiled fine. Uh, so now all we need to do is upload it to the matrix. So what I think we'll do now is uh, we'll just show you brief snippets of, uh, of all of the, those three games. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy. We'll start with a classic game of Breakout. This one's actually got a, a sort of analog style of control. You can see the slider there at the bottom. And as we move the slider left and right, it actually corresponds to moving the, uh, the, the paddle left and right on the bottom. So let's have a little go at this. Never mind. So there are three levels of that, uh, and it gets progressively harder as you go through it. The other new game on there is Snake, so let's have a quick look at that one. Oh, never mind. <laughs> It's quite difficult to play with the uh, the Bluetooth controls, but it's uh, fun nonetheless. Okay, that's all there is for this week. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below, and I'll see you next time.